All right, we got a wild ride today, boys. We're gonna be heading out and trying to transform a yard that's chocked full of weeds. And our, go our goal is to not haul one single thing out or in. We're gonna see if we can do that, but before we can get the job started, we don't have such a good start to the day with the cat. Still learning and finding new things with that machine. So let's just jump right into it. So the plan is Sam's gonna meet me at my house and we're going to drive the Bobcat skid loader with the bucket we need over to the job site, which is just a couple miles down the road. Drop off the bucket and connect that up to the Caterpillar skid loader because that one has the tracks we need. We have arrived. Sam's gonna grab some tools and I'm gonna grab the skid loader and get a head start on them. We're gonna meet up at the job site. Alright, uh, we beat Stan out here, but uh, I think I hear him coming. Yeah, you couldn't come rolling up just normal. You had to come up on two wheels, huh? You gotta have some fun at work, dude. It just... All right, we're gonna pop this off from this machine and we're gonna put it onto the cat. I like how it says, hello master, when you fire that up. Honestly, the only way that would be any better is if it said, hello daddy. No, Gee, I dream a genie. I dream a genie, there Dude, you go. Everybody that grew up that's my age or older, when she would say, hello master, every, every kid was like, oh. melt. <laughs> <laughs> Before we can start grading with the new bucket, we have to hook up the new bucket. Might have to do it a couple of times because those pins like to bind. Now I've heard the bucket release pin sticking is actually a common problem on these cats, but this is my first time running it, so I don't know for sure. We got fluid just dripping, like just dripping out of this middle one. Let me give it a tip. With a persuader, we'll just, we'll just see if we can get it. It's still got crap stuck in it from Mississippi. That's a pine needle in there. How do they get a pine needle inside of that fitting? Uh, <laughs> oh, hey, real quick, you wanna see something cool? Look at this. It's adjustable. Shut the front door. Isn't that awesome? It's the little things, huh? Dude, that is, I've never seen anything Me neither. like that before. Me neither. Black and Decker, too. Dude, look at oh, this. Oh, that is gross. What the heck? You want to know why something doesn't seal? That's probably why. <laughs> what is what that? What is that? That almost looks like grease. It looks like metal shavings almost. Kind of feels like metal shavings. I'm going to give it a run through. Let's see if she leaks. Okay. Get off there. No, it's just this middle one is again, but... And how bad is that middle one leaking? It's a steady little drip. All right, let's see how the bot... Let's see how the bucket... This bucket is called the Hydro Bucket by CMP Attachments and it has a built-in Harley rake into the back of it. Right. I think we're ready to go. Okay. Even though the hydraulics are leaking, I'm still gonna push forward. Before we start though, let's go in the back and show the boys what we got going on for a job site. Okay, sounds good. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna get this all prepped and ready for seed all through here. We're gonna take this road out, we're gonna till it up as best we can but look at that mess oh <laughs> so what we want to do is we want to transform this entire area into something that this guy can come in and he can throw some seed down and grow some this grass is going to be a lot of, there's going to be a lot of seed yep it'll be interesting and it's just so uneven like when you go down over there what it is you can see it's it's got like one of these and then it's kind of pitching towards the house and It'll be a good test for this bucket. What we want to do is just go in here and clear out the mess so that the customer can envision their own landscaping. But let's show you what we're up against. So we got our work set out for us today. Oh yeah, this one. It didn't look as bad up on the uh, up on top of that wall there. No, no. Once you get down into it, you can see what we're dealing with. 
broken glass. Look at it. So you still got one oh, of those. Oh, we still got one of those. So we're going to cut this bridge down, take everything over. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this in the video, but it's like, it's, it's almost like terraced. It was. Yeah. Telephone poles to terrace it. Well, we're going to have a fun day. All right. So my plan is not to haul any of this out, but to make it disintegrate. I'm going to break it up into its finest components and work it back into the soil. Now I was taught old school methods when I'm regrading, and that's to grade going forward, backward, with your bucket full or empty. Either way, you're always working. I don't know where I'm going, but I don't want to know. A predictable life is not what I want. Putting one foot down, one step at a time. Let the road turn, that shit's fine. People ask all the questions, the box you bring. To classify your life with the stroke of a pen. Take those old rules, crumple them, and throw one out. We're burning that box right now. Moon breakers. So a lot of times while I'm making adjustments to the grade, it's not big bucket holes of dirt that I'm moving. It's very small ones. I'm making minor adjustments and going over and over the site again. That does two things. That helps break up the vegetative manner, but also allows me to go by feel. So as I'm driving forward and backward, I'm not just looking at the grade, I'm also feeling the grade and the feedback directly from the machine through into the cab. That tells me if I hit something big and the machine starts rocking, I've got a problem area. time that I'm really cutting deep like this is when I'm taking out the ridges. bucket I'm testing out has a built-in Harley rake, but I'm not going to be using it until the end of the job. So for the majority of this project, this bucket's just going to be used as a bucket. Now for this first ridge, I'm going to initially cut it out side to side, and then I'm going to blend it in with the rest of the slopes by going up and down or front to back. Either way, I'm hitting it from all four axes to make sure that I can get create the smoothest possible contours possible. Well, I'm trying to keep Sam out of the equation on this project as much as possible, just in case you guys are out doing a job and you don't have someone to pick rocks and sticks. So every time I come across one, I'm just using the corner of the bucket to grab it and set it out of my work area. All right, here's a fun fact. Before we started this job, I've never actually drove the cat outside of snow plowing. And so this is going to be my first time running it in dirt. So I worked my way across the yard going one section at a time, just focusing on the rough contours. After I get everything laid out the way I like it, then I'll hit that final grade and then I'll t tap it with the hard grade. Sometimes though, I do have to ask Sam to give me a hand, like right here, I just got too much dirt in this bucket and I wanted to separate out that brick. Do you have that brick for me? Yeah. So when I'm running on a dirt site and going back and forth a lot, I usually don't look over my shoulder. 
I'll glance, but I don't do the full 360 spin behind me because as I'm going forward, I'm memorizing all the obstacles, which works great on a dirt site, but not so hot for snow plowing because sometimes you'll come into a snow plow site where people want you to run into them so they can collect the insurance money. And so the habits that you use on a dirt site don't necessarily translate over to good habits on a snow site. Now I come to a section of the yard that has a nice big juicy layer of black dirt and I'm going to harvest that for other areas of the project. Mmm, black dirt. Now I know some of you guys don't call it black dirt, at least in Minnesota that's what we call it. Uh, I guess some of you guys call it like loam, we've never said that in these neck of the woods. Topsoil, yeah, we use that, but that's that's we use that more of an indicator of what you see right there, just topsoil. For us, black dirt is pulverized, screened, and processed. Topsoil is the top layer of crap I'm pulling off this yard, which I wouldn't bring to anybody else's yard. So before I even start to worry about the finished grade, I want to make sure I break up the roots of all of this turf. The more I go over it, the more I'm hitting it with the edge of my bucket, the more it's breaking down. And then once I get it to the point where I feel like it's not going to clump or create issues, then I'll hit this, I'll snap through this site with that Harley rake. Every time I go forward and backward, I'm shaving it. I'm shaving out the roots. I'm killing the existing turf and breaking it up into the smallest components possible. So the area above and below this retaining wall are super compacted. We built this thing a year or two ago and we compacted the heck out of this. And then for the last year or however long it's been since we built it, the customer's actually been driving their truck behind the retaining wall, packing it even more. So it's gonna take a lot more work with that Harley rake to get this area to loosen up. So as I'm going forward, I'm using the front edge of the bucket to try to grab the turf and then I'm incorporating the Harley rake to try to help break it up a little bit more just because this area is one of the more difficult zones to get loosened up. So once the contours are set, we can finally move into the finished grade. And this is where that Harley rake attachment on the back of the bucket comes into play. Now up to this point, I haven't really used it. I've played with it. I've ground up a little bit of the more compacted ground with it. But now we're gonna see just how well this thing does for the finished grading. Anybody know what language this song is in? Never heard it before, but I thought it sounded pretty cool. Look at them golfers going in the background. That's kind of cool.
all those passes we made over the yard are starting to pay off. You can see that this dirt is getting light and fluffy. Now I'm going to go backward over this exact same spot that I'm currently going forward over and you'll see the difference in the grade. I'm using this, that Harley rake going both forward and backward and just reversing it inside of the cab. took us two hours. That took us two from the start. We started just a little bit after, well, a little bit before noon. So two, yep. and, a, two and a half hours. Right what there. time is it? Let me see. We're at, yep, about two and a half. Two and a half hours. Yep. So at this point, well, I'm going to work my way out. Where you can just take a little bit of seed, throw it down, yep. water it, and then just keep it moist and you know, be in good shape. I've actually took the black dirt that I found from the hill over here and yeah. I brought it up into the upper yard to help grow yeah. some grass here then I tilled that in so it's amazing I can't tell you what a difference is that. I'm still not done though I want to break the vegetation down a little bit more and smooth out some of the contours a little better dig much into the path behind the retaining wall so a lot of this has to depend on that Harley rake attachment to do all of the work. Let's go check out the site. We hauled nothing off. Everything was worked right back into the soil. And actually, we were able to break the organic matter down so it benefits. Oh. I would say what was about three, three and a half hours. It was about three and a half. So let's just look at the site. You know, I think we're we're pretty good. There was a giant ridge here. Oh, it was terraced. There was like three terraces going through here. Yep. Where else do we have? Oh, we had, a we had that bridge. big one was right over there. Let's go check out how that turned out. Where was that other? Oh yeah, it was right over there. Dude, no, it was right here. This is where the ridge was. Oh no, I thought we were talking about the stump. Oh yeah, no. Yeah, there's a big one right over there so too. This is this is that ridge. I mean, it, it blended pretty good. Oh yeah. It blended pretty good. This is a huge difference from what it was when we got here. All right, guys. Well, that's our video for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope we were able to show what this bucket can and can't do. If you got any questions about it, put it in the comments down below. And actually what I'll do is I'll ask the guys that made the bucket CMP to check out the video every now and then and maybe hopefully jump in and answer any questions you guys may have because they know a heck of a lot more about it. This was our very first time ever really using this bucket. And technically it was my first time ever using the cat too yeah, on yeah. top of it. I never How used like that. I love the bucket controls, love the bucket controls, hate the cat controls, hate the machine controls. You talk about herky-jerky, but now it's my understanding you can fine-tune and tweak them. Now, I mean, you can like change it like on a video game, yeah. where like if it's too sensitive, you can turn that up and down. I don't know how to do that, yeah, you're but, to get in there. but I'm telling you, the bucket controls themselves are so precise. I mean, it's just like 
Wow. Yeah. Wow. He's got a pretty got a pretty good field of vision in there too. It feels like you're almost sitting a little higher. Up. I like it. Yeah. I like I the machine. Too. I just I just I just like it. I just those herky jerky controls. I gotta I gotta change that. Oh yeah. Yep. All right, God bless you guys. Go get him. We'll see you on the next one.